Welcome to the Connected Campus Podcast, where we explore the ways that diverse professionals are working every day to optimize their efforts to recruit, retain, and graduate their students. Okay, well, we're about a couple minutes past the hour, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for attending today with the Soft Docs and Pathify Joint webinar. We're really excited to have this for everyone and share what our two technologies are doing and how we're working with colleges and universities in the space today. But it is regarding leveraging technology to improve student success. First, we're going to go through introductions, um, then we'll go through both company overviews, allow everyone to get in and actually see the products themselves, talk about a few client success stories, and please feel free at any time, the Q&A um, button in here, please feel free to interact through that. If you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer those live as we go through this demonstration. I'm Kathy Moore, I'm an account executive with 18 plus years in the higher ed tech space, if you will. I've had over five years at SoftDocs um, and excited to be here with everyone today. I'll hand it over to Phil for an introduction as well. Hey everyone, Phil Askins here with SoftDocs, I'm sales engineer. Um, so I'll show you around the SoftDocs product and answer any technical questions you have. Um, and I'll pass it over to Dustin. Hi, everybody. Dustin Ramsdale, Community Engagement Lead at Pathify. I'm a few months into my uh, tenure here. I uh, just hit my six-month milestone uh, last month. And uh, this is uh, one of my first formal uh, kind of webinars that I'm doing. So very excited for this opportunity. But uh, uh, for folks who, who know Pathify, I help manage our social media and uh, host our podcast and do other content creation, things like that. And I've been working uh, for the past decade in higher ed and ed tech. And uh, yeah, excited to be on this webinar. Hi, I'm Julie Gummerman. I'm the senior sales engineer here at Pathify. I've been here for almost three years, went to a coding boot camp before that. And before that, all my experience is in secondary education. Thanks, everyone. So just to get started, we'll get right into soft docs as a whole. And as you can see here, you know, at the bottom, you can see the five core values that we carry as an organization, grit, collaboration, inclusivity, candor, and curiosity. And we love to carry that over with the clients that we partner with and the partners that are out there in this space, such as Pathify, to really, as you go back up to the top, get a better understanding and, and where we are in the marketplace and our intention is really what it says there in bold, modernize campus operations to drive that institutional success. Because from our perspective, you know, understanding that you are interacting with student clients, um, vendors, and employees, um, really the way in which you're communicating with them is what we find critical. And we see students essentially being your client and how they communicate is far different and, and ever-changing as we can see day to day and ensuring that we are providing the best way, we, we consider them the early adopters of this, if you will. And so, you know, for myself, I always say, I know what a fax machine is, but that's not the way we're communicating today. We're communicating by allowing students to really take ownership into what they're seeing, what they should be responding to, how they want to communicate with you, and providing the resources and tools to allow that to get those fast responses, to provide them the information so that they can enroll or that a um, new hire can onboard appropriately into the system. We work with all of the student information systems that are out there. We have yet to find a application that we're unable to work with. And we really focus on uh, five core areas, which I'll get into in a little bit, but that's the repository, forms, electronic signatures, workflow, and print output. SoftDocs has been in the education space, as you can see, since the late 90s. We work with over 700 customers across the country and in other countries as well. It's imperative that we maintain a solution that's really scalable, and I hope you can see that from our range of institutions that we work with, 500 to 110,000. While it might be a little bit different, um, from a scale that you're utilizing the solution, the challenges that you're facing are still there, no matter what your full-time enrollment may be. 
If you're utilizing other solutions out there, one of the things um, that's critical to our success and the core pieces from our services team is a migration component. A lot of schools are using other solutions um, and maybe looking for various reasons to get into a new platform like SoftDocs um, to gain some efficiencies as a whole or just work with a, a partner that's really focused in the same core business of higher education. We maintain a 99% customer retention rate, and we're really proud of that. But what our customers tell us in relation is it's because of our education focus. So no matter what stage they are engaging with us, at any point, um, you know, everyone that they're interacting with certainly understands their business and what they're trying to accomplish. And so that creates a really strong strategic partnership. Hopefully our core team will tell a really good story today. And here's a small sampling to the left of clients that we keep and clients that we work um, and partner in both utilizing SoftDocs and Pathify. To the right, you can see a bunch of pinpoints on here. And, and this is just a sampling of where our customers and clients are located. And we put this on here um, because no matter what your role may be, there may be different types of conversations you'd like to be having with someone who's working with SoftDocs or Pathify. And we just encourage, you know, we will help facilitate, make the appropriate introductions so that whether you're IT on the student side or in the back office, you can have those conversations. Um, and it will certainly be more than happy, as I said, to provide that, those contacts for you. As I mentioned before, we, we do we do have five core areas, one being document management. So this is the repository. This is where you're storing the supporting information that really supports your system of truth. So whatever your student information system is, if you're using different applications on the admission side, for example, or in the back office, it could be Slate, Recruit, whatever that might be. This is where you would just store the, the documents that are sent in to you that might be in paper filing cabinets today or in email and printed out in various offices. So this is an opportunity to really store and secure the content that's in here um, and really make it permission-based down to the document type. The next piece that obviously has become a little stickier over the course of the last few years, especially coming out of a pandemic, if you will, is the electronic forms. So providing information and students a way to communicate with you, send information back. We remain device agnostic. So whatever device your student vendor or employee are utilizing, it should be scaling to fit so that they're not missing anything. They're not having to have an experience of scrolling left to right and trying to find out where they should be looking or filling information out. But this, you know, electronic forms should be used anywhere and everywhere that you have paper today. And so just providing that additional step for the communication and then the opportunity to use that same device to take pictures of the supporting information they need to support what they're sending to you. Once you receive information, the next step is typically making a decision or acknowledgement of receipt. And so once we are able to capture any kind of information, whether it's electronic forms, you're scanning something in because you've received a paper document. Once it's submitted into our system, then it allows, goes directly into a workflow queue if you're not storing it directly. And this is where based on whatever that information is, you can make a decision, um, you know, have it flow to the appropriate people, whether it be um, admissions or registration straight to an advisor, and then having that push and pull of communication between the school and the student. So acknowledgement, we've received this, we'll be responding to you in X amount of days. And then within the same workflow, once it hits through completion, we've approved, denied, or we're just filing, filing it away from acknowledgement. Once you've re gone through the workflow automation, it would then go back and be stored to support that record in your student information system. With the pandemic especially, and just the needs that are arising, the ability to have unlimited e-signatures compliant with our forms has been a key critical point of success um, with us and our partners that we're working with today. So we set this up in a model that once you own our electronic forms and the unlimited e-signature capability, 
We're, our hope is that you're using it anywhere and everywhere, and we're doing everything we can to enable you to do so. So anywhere you need a wet signature or some sort of compliant signature, this is where this would come into play. The final piece is our print customization. So if you think of check printing even, or transcripts that need to go out, anywhere you're doing bulk printing, we have an opportunity to allow that bulk printing and then capture those documents electronically and store them back into the repository so that that would allow, eliminate, if you will, the need to print out physically, scan back in, and then tie it into a record. So we wanna do as much efficiently behind the scenes as we can so that all of our clients can really focus. Many of you are wearing multiple hats and we have a great appreciation for that so that you can focus on your core business and allow all of this to go on behind the scenes and, and allow you to have the information you need at your fingertips um, that, just, that are supporting the analytics you need, the retention you need, and the decisions that you're making. Again, please feel free to put anything in the Q&A section of this, but with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dustin. Thanks, Kathy, and I'll have you uh, kind of drive us around here, but uh, uh, I have a couple of slides here just to kind of quickly uh, give some context as to uh, Pathify and who we are, what we do, and then obviously we'll have the demos to kind of go more in depth, but, um, you know, this... Uh, bridging the student experience gap. Uh, you know, when we're talking about that, we're talking about it pretty holistically, anything and everything the student is doing in or out of the classroom, uh, making sure that uh, all the tools that uh, you are using as an institution are working better together and uh, removing those sort of uh, barriers and frictions and hurdles and sort of uh, trying to really kind of simplify the complexity because we're you know supporting uh, working adult learners who have complicated lives and these are complicated institutions that have a lot of resources and uh, people and things that uh, the student has to kind of navigate and figure out how best to uh, connect with them. So uh, we want to try to, again, reduce that friction and kind of really bring uh, a modern user experience uh, to uh, kind of the platforms and kind of gateways and things that uh, students are interacting with to uh, engage with everything that the institution has to offer. Go ahead. And this next slide uh, kind of has uh, this sort of visual representation of uh, the tech ecosystems at institutions where everything is just sort of strewn about, kind of disparate. Uh, some things may be connected to each other's, but not others. And uh, so there's sort of a... a, a you know, disconnection, kind of a limitation of potential that's happening uh, with the kind of evolving and uh, very large tech stacks that institution is uh, leveraging. So, uh, you know, it is that idea of uh, how can an institution, one, just on sort of a core principle, uh, invest in kind of their digital infrastructure uh, that they are using to kind of create kind of that representation uh, virtually of, of their institution for their students, but uh, then kind of have all the different tools kind of work better together. Um, you know, that just is kind of, uh, I think, a core value that that both of us kind of share is sort of just the, the sort of efficiency, you know, saving staff time, students time, and everything. It, it just is a, a really uh, important outcome to uh, strive towards. So, um, yeah, and you can click ahead to the next slide here, you know, uh, hunting for the information that you need. Uh, you know, it's just human nature. If you're kind of hitting friction points, hitting hurdles and hitting walls, you're just going to bail out. And in higher ed, you know, we've seen that that obviously has really negative impacts for both the institution and the student where, you know, they're just generally dissatisfied and maybe to a point where they are uh, not getting the help they need, failing out of a course, dropping out, you know, just because they cannot uh, sort of find their way through this labyrinth of uh, web pages and link farms and just menus upon submenus and this, you know, all these sort of different things are at least just outdated platforms and uh, not very intuitive uh, user design. So, uh, you know, again, we, we owe it to students to give them kind of that modern experience, but also, like I said, kind of saving everybody's time uh, in a world where, yeah, people are wearing many hats, you know, have complicated lives and a lot of demands, they just want to be able to uh, get the information that they need when they need it, how they need it. Uh, and uh, that's something that we are just continually striving towards kind of finding the best ways to uh, to do that. And so uh, this is what we are kind of striving for, something that looks a lot more kind of uh, uh, orderly and sort of organized and uh, interconnected, everything's sort of building upon uh, each other. So uh, it's that cohesion, it's simplifying the user experience, 
uh, and kind of charting a path towards improving student success because every student, uh, you know, is able to on mobile or on a website have the same experience, the same access, the same information, uh, and you know, start their day kind of knowing what they need to do, what uh, announcements are uh, coming out, tasks and reminders and nudges that they have. Uh, you know, maybe it is to fill out a particular form that they can get a, a nudge of saying, hey, do this by this time to get this done. And that initiates a whole sort of workflow of steps from there to kind of optimize everybody's time. But, uh, you know, this is having everything uh, connected in and sort of there's a lot more depth, of, you know, than we can kind of give sort of its... Uh, uh, due diligence here, but like the the back end of what we do that uh, integrates all these systems on the back end, so that uh, the kind of forward facing front end that a, a student, uh, especially, is interacting with uh, is just very consistent, very seamless, and everything comes together in one place. And then uh, at a certain point, you can sort of go even deeper into a learning management system or somewhere else if there's something you know uh, in particular you need to do in that system. But at the very least, you get a high level overview and summary. Um, of things that are going on in your academic life um, and honestly in and outside of the classroom. Um, you know, all of those sort of experiences are coming together. And this really does get to give it credit that entire student journey um, of uh, everything that's going on in, 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 in and outside the classroom. Um, and even starting from being a prospective student that is considering an institution all the way through to graduation, having a consistent experience that you always go to to start uh, and find the information resources, your fellow students, your uh, faculty and staff members that you want to interact with, uh, it's there and everything is kind of contoured as to what role you're in and how you sort of uh, are interacting with the institution and what you uh, need to see and kind of uh, trimming, you know, the hedges of getting rid of the other things that you don't need to see um, or don't want to see and sort of allowing for some customization there as well. Um, so that personalization is, is a big uh, driver for us um, and doing that based on sort of uh, these aspects of the engagement hub and also uh, kind of who you are, the role that you have in relation to the institution. And last but not least, this gives a really great high level summary um, of kind of who we are, uh, what we're about, uh, what makes us different. Um, and, you know, yeah, just connecting people to people, people to information, people to tools, um, what they particularly need as an individual uh, to achieve their academic goals, whether it is getting involved in a, in a student club, uh, interacting with uh, faculty or staff members in institution, uh, figuring out how to uh, get in touch with financial aid, uh, anything that's going on, uh, they can have this one core place that's sort of the nexus of uh, everything at the institution that makes it easier to navigate and easier to connect with. and. Um, just have uh, an experience that is more conducive to their success uh, throughout their entire time at the institution. Um, so uh, to see a little bit more of kind of the uh, reality of what this looks like firsthand, uh, Julie will give us a quick demo of uh, the Pathify platform, and then we'll also do the same for SoftDocs, but uh, Julie, take it away. Okay, sounds good. So Dustin taught you all about the why, um, about why you might need an engagement hub like this, and he really did hit the nail on the head in terms of needing one system to bring all these disparate systems together in order to make things easier for your students and for your faculty members and your staff on campus. And this is what the Pathify portal looks like. It's really all about getting the right information to the right user at the right time based off of the roles that they have. And we have a number of features in our portal that allows us to do it. We like to think of ourselves as being more of an engagement hub than a portal with the idea that people are in and out of here all the time, finding out what's new. This right here is an announcement and an announcement is a piece of information that can go out to a user based on roles and they can be in different levels of severity referring to here's a notice just something to be aware of this area of campus is really muddy you might want to stay away from it versus hey we have an emergency alert things are very dangerous do not come out on campus at all right now and those also get sent out to users via a push notification on mobile these here are quick link capsules and what these are doing is these are triggered to users based on their roles. You can also schedule them to appear and disappear for users at particular times. And they provide links to those third-party systems or important places within the portal. Um, and then again, they'll show up to your users based on students and um, faculty members might need links to under 
or academics, whereas some staff members might really just not need that. Same thing with support services and student life and freshmen. So you can really target that user um, with information based on the time of year and based on their role. These here are widgets and widgets are pulling information from those third party systems for users on refresh. So for example, here we're pulling from the LMS in this particular case, Canvas, but we also have integrations with all the other major LMSs and we're displaying courses as well as announcements here within the next couple of sprint cycles. So by the end of June, we're also going to be seeing assessments and their due dates, along with grades for completed assignments. And then we have, of course, the productivity suite. We have user balances also being pulled from the SIS, as well as um, the academic profile information showing where a user is. And again, there are these call to actions buttons that are taking users to other platforms in order to complete important pieces of business. Some other things that are of particular interest if you're talking about getting the right information to the right user at the right time would be tasks. Tasks are a to-do list and this to-do list will be surfaced for users. And there are a couple of ways you can associate tasks with users. Sometimes they'll come from third-party systems and get transferred over to our system. And then they're usually based on the user's individual identity. So maybe you're bringing in financial aid tasks, or you're bringing in holds and restrictions. Hey, you need to go in, pay this bill because you're blocked. And then there will be a call to action button that links that user out to the specific spot to resolve these. Another way that you can connect users to tasks would be to um, tr trigger them. So if a user gets a particular role, they've just become an employee all of a sudden, lo and behold, they have seven different tasks that are related to new employees and maybe they're taking them to use particular forms or particular activities in the portal or particular things to do. And then another place that one might find particularly forms and pieces of reference to soft docs might be resources. Resources are going to be geared toward, again, individual users based on their roles. They're either going to be uploads or they're going to be links out to third-party systems. And then from here, when you're actually adding them in, you can gear them based on role too. So if a user is a student and only a student, they're going to be seeing student-related forms, as opposed to if you're only an employee, you'd see employee-related forms. If you're both, you'll see both at the same time. We do have um, a lightweight CMS layer um, within pages. Pages would be content created within the Pathify ecosystem, or sometimes I framed in. And again, there's option for uploading and um, linking out to different places based on what you're seeing on the screen. Um, again, if you're interested in something like um, a student exchange um, foreign exchange program or something like that, or a scholarship program, there'd probably be links to the forms that you need to complete in order to um, be up on those particular items to be able to apply for those programs or those grants or whatnot. And then last but not least, we have a community component. Um, this piece is called groups. And what groups is going to do is it's actually going to provide places for people who have the same attributes to be able to discuss and share resources. They can make posts and comment. There's very much a social media aspect to this. There is also the opportunity to include events and again, resources specific to that particular group. And groups can be either open groups related to affinity groups, such as the snowboarding group or the International Film Society versus a faculty senate group, which would probably be private and unsearchable. And with that, I'm going to turn this back over to the soft docs side. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Julie. Get my screen shared here. All right, so I'm going to give you just a high level overview of the SoftDocs product. Um, again, just as a reminder, you know, eTree would be the, the software platform. Uh, it would consist of an electronic forms portal, uh, automated workflows, and then our electronic filing cabinet, uh, which is called eTree Content. All of that's going to be hosted in the Microsoft Azure Cloud. Uh, so what I'm showing on the screen here is uh, 
is the eTrieve central UI. So this is our forms portal. This is where you would, you know, drive your students, your staff to complete forms and submit forms. Um, also where your staff would act on forms as a part of that approval process. Uh, so all of our eTree forms here are going to be fully customizable. You know what I show you just kind of generic mock up so your school logo can be added uh, school colors, any required fields can be added to forms, of course, as well. Um, we can also limit uh, the eTree viewer here by department or by process. So if I'm logging in as a student, you know, I'm not going to see HR forms listed, but since I have uh, admin level access to show off, you know, kind of the enterprise capabilities of the software and your ability to leverage eTrieve across any department at the institution, um, you know, you'll see uh, pretty much every form uh, within my system showing here. All right. Um, so as Kathy mentioned, eTrieve is fully browser-based and device agnostic. So that means that we can have users access our forms um, from any internet enabled device. There's no application or software to download uh, to, to access these forms. And it can all be done from a mobile device as well. So I can show you any of the forms within our system can be mobile responsive. So here we're looking at this add drop form from an iPhone 12 perspective. And you'll see you still have the same UI you would from a desktop. You'll still have access to all the fields. Um, all the drop downs, of course, will still be included as well. Um, that also includes the ability to add attachments right from a smartphone. So if we need to have uh, identification documents or financial documents, you know, appended to your forms. You'll be able to do that right from a smartphone. Uh, just take a picture right, right from the camera or upload right from your uh, smartphone library to get those forms pushed through. Um, so that's a bit of a, a bit of a inclusion there that we can provide, you know, not everyone has a printer or a computer even at home. So, you know, most folks have a smartphone, um, so they'll be able to submit and take part in these forms right from that mobile device. All right, so since our forms are browser based, um, we'll be able to embed links right on your school website to these forms, or of course, right into the uh, the Pathify engagement hub as well. Um, and what that would look like is instead of, you know, clicking on a link and downloading a, a PDF perhaps, um, you know, they'll be able to click on that link and be driven right to the form within the eTrieve system. Um, so we can uh, set up eTrieve to be linked to your single sign-on. So once they click that link from the Pathify portal, um, you know, they're not going to have to authenticate again because they're already going to be authenticated most likely through Pathify. Um, so again, just uh, a little bit of quality of life there, just driving users right to forms. Um, we can also set up our forms to be anonymous as well. So we can bypass authentication altogether. So for your future students or parents needing to sign forms, um, you know, vendors, you know, in, in the business office, that kind of thing, um, we can drive folks right to forms um, without uh, any level of authentication. Um, and then we can also accommodate, you know, public authentications using Google or Microsoft uh, accounts as well. All right, so once I've logged into the system, um, I've authenticated again via SSO in this case, um, eTrieve is going to know who I am. So it's going to also be able to integrate back to third party softwares like an SIS or an ERP system and auto populate the forms, um, pulling some of the data from that system. So you'll have that capability as well to um, pull data from an SIS system. And then of course, in this name change or address change scenario, uh, any of the data that we're changing, we can then write back to those systems as well using an API connection. All right, so the last thing I want to note um, as far as the forms functionality is concerned is our e-signature tool. Um, so any of our forms can be leveraged as an e-signature type form. Um, and what that would be useful for would be anyone outside of the institution that doesn't have, uh, you know, school credentials to log into eTrieve or log into Pathify to access these forms. Again, you know, think of uh, future students, alumni, that type of thing. Um, we can set up, again, under your licensing subscription, so no additional cost here. Um, the ability to write these forms out to, uh, to any uh, email account here. So we can click on that link from my email, and then we're going to drive a user right to that form within our system. Um, so e-signature is going to be uh, e-sign compliant as well as UETA compliant. Um, so as far as the law is concerned, you know, a signature on this form is uh, just as good as a wet signature on a physical document.
back to my inbox here. All right, so um, the last bit of uh, eTrieve Central UI I wanna touch on um, and kind of a segue into the workflow portion is uh, this, the inbox. So now we're looking at uh, eTrieve from like the admin side of things. Um, so in this case, you know, I'm in the uh, registrar's office. I get an, a notification to my email that I have a form in my central inbox that needs my approval. So I'll click that link. I'll be driven right to the page we see here. And I'll be able to review, approve, and decline the form. Um, I can also share it out with another user if I need to get another set of eyes on it. Um, if there's an issue with a form, I can make a note right in the package history, say, hey, you know, we're missing some information here. Maybe we're missing an attachment. And then I can return it to any previous point in that workflow. Um, I'll be able to view and add attachments from this point, as well as download and print. Um, the central inbox is also going to be mobile responsive. So you can, uh, you know, submit those approvals right from a smartphone as well. All right. So then let's have a look here at the workflow portion. This is our workflow designer. Um, and just kind of walking through what's going on here, our forms being submitted, it's gonna be automatically routed to a department head. So this is a, a purchase request form that we're looking at our workflow. Um, so we're using our conditional actor to automatically route. Um, again, an integration back into an ERP system in this case. Um, same thing can be done with, uh, with the student to automatically route a form to like their advisor or uh, a teacher perhaps. Um, from there, once the department head approves, we'll route it to finance. So we have a single user approving here. We can have groups of users as well. So finance would be a group of users assigned to that, uh, that team. Um, and they'll all have a view into that form. Once one person approves it, uh, we can then update um, fields in our digital uh, filing cabinet content. And then we can also export that data. So that's what's happening here. Um, so we can write the data back again to your ERP or SIS systems, um, as well as you know writing that data out to maybe a, a supplementary database for uh, reporting purposes. So any data we capture on a form uh, can be pushed around to uh, to any other system you know to meet your needs. Um, and then the last step here would be filing it automatically into eTrieve content. Um, so we'll look at content next. Uh, if you have an existing document repository in place, eTrieve is happy to work with those systems as well. Um, so we can write any of the forms we capture, um, any of the attachments as well, um, and a metadata file out to just a file path for another existing uh, document repository to intake and index and file. Um, so we can decouple the product. So if you just need a forms and workflow solution, we can help you there. Um, and then if you just need a, a document repository solution, you know, we can, we can help you there as well. Of course, it's all gonna work uh, seamlessly together as a full platform. Um, all of the actors and activities you see listed here will be drag and drop. So building out these workflows is something that you can do yourself. You don't have to come to SoftDocs. Um, even IT doesn't necessarily need to be involved here. Um, this is something a department head can handle. So if I want to add myself to this workflow, I'll drag and drop that icon. I'll do my configuration there. And then it's just a matter of connecting the dots. Um, so maybe we need to route logically uh, based off of a dollar amount here. So I can come in here and set up that navigation goal as well. So a lot of options to navigate um, these forms around your approval process um, and, and set up those automations. Let's see, I see a, a note here in the q and is SoftDocs able to use AD groups and automatically add and remove people from groups of approvers in SoftDocs? So yes, absolutely. Um, that's where our roles would come into play. So generally, when we set up a workflow, we're actually not going to use a single user here. We're going to set up a role. So if that uh, dean of the school, um, you know, leaves and is replaced, then it's automatically going to route to, you know, whoever is um, listed there in AD as that next uh, position. Um, so we can do user imports to build out these users, roles, and groups. Um, so great, crush, great uh, question there, Jasmine. Um, all right. So that's uh, most of what we need to note here for uh, the workflows. We can build in reminders as well for those different approval processes. Um, and then of course we can write out some of this data again, back to the engagement hub with Pathify, uh, you know, maybe triggering, um, you know, the next step in a, in a forms workflow process. So think of like a, an admission application is submitted, it's approved through the eTree platform. We're gonna notify Pathify and then they're gonna push out the next steps for like the enrollment process for those types of forms.
Um, so a lot of great in integration capabilities between those two systems. All right. So let's then transition to eTrieve content here. This will be the last piece of the puzzle for the eTrieve platform. Uh, again, our digital filing cabinet here. So everything is hosted in the Microsoft Azure cloud. Um, our cloud team will handle all of your backups, all the redundancy, as well as all of the site certifications and security. So it's gonna take a lot of weight off of the IT shoulders. Um, we're gonna handle a lot of that, uh, that infrastructure for you. Um, just like central, uh, the filing structure here for content will be very customizable as well. Um, so these different areas listed here in our filing tree, you can think of uh, these as your different offices. So like our employee records would be like our HR office, um, student records would be like the registrar office, um, but we can have those show um, or not show just depending on what departments decide to leverage, um, you know, within the system. Uh, Another question here in Q&A, if we already use a form management platform, is there an ability to migrate the forms in use from that platform to SoftDocs? Um, so it would depend on the platform. Uh, we can import uh, fillable PDFs. So I know like Google Forms, for example, you can write those forms out to a PDF, make those fillable and then import them from there. Um, again, just kind of depends on what we're working with. If you have the HTML code for your forms, for instance, we could uh, import that into the form builder. Um, but, you know, there's not a, a UI tool specifically for, you know, every other form solution out there where we could automatically import it. So that would be something that, you know, our, uh, our project team would work with you on, our business and technical consultants would work with you there to, uh, to see what we can do um, to import those forms or, or rebuild them within our system. Um, so yeah, thanks for that question, Josh. Um, all right. So again, filing structure here can be fully customizable, you know, all the way down from the departments departments listed to you know how the the files are stored here in the system. So if you want to have, uh, you know, these these files stored by year or something like that, again, you know, that's where our project team would come into play uh, to work with you on your current processes um, and help you make sure that this matches your existing filing structure. Uh, we do have a great search capability within the filing system. So once all your students or staff from the system, you know, we don't want to dig through the file tree necessarily for those users. So we can start actually just typing out a student name or student ID. And then that's going to return a list of documents I have permission to view here. So we do have document level security as well within the system. Um, so, you know, if Ashley has a, a disciplinary action form, for instance, in our, in our system, I may not have permission to view that. So it's not going to list here in my file tree. So we can uh, keep you know, departments out of each other's files as well as within departments, we can get very granular with what uh, documents can be viewed where. Um, getting documents into the system. So all of our forms will of course automatically index and file here. Um, you can also attach forms right from your file tree um, on your computer. If I had a scanner hooked up, I'd have a little scanner icon. So you can actually scan documents right into the system as well. Um, our different view and annotation tools across the top. So we can do a thumbnail view here for our larger documents. Um, if I need to rearrange pages, I'll have that capability um, as well as you know doing some uh, different uh, maintenance within those systems. Um, and then our annotations as well. So once your forms are in the system, they're set they're static PDFs at that point. Uh, if you need to make an annotation, we can drop a sticky note on there. We can highlight, freehand draw, uh, we can draw shapes as well, so you could use that for uh, you know redaction purposes, depending on your uh, your permission settings within the system. Um, and then we also have stamps, so right out of the box, we can drop on, hey, this has been approved. Um, a couple of little photo editing capabilities as well. You know, this is not uh, Photoshop, but we can clean up some documents that we're importing. You know, some legacy documents, that kind of thing as well. Um, all of our annotations will be permission backed, so we'll, we can control who can view and edit those. Um, those different uh, functionalities within our system. Um, we can download and print as well. Uh, we can also print link documents, so pretty handy for uh, auditing, auditing purposes. Uh, you can also share a document right from the system. That's gonna send a link out, not the document itself. We wanna make sure again, we have the correct eyes um, on those, uh, those documents. Um, our key fields here are how we index and file as well as search for documents within the system. Um, and then we can also link documents together. So if I wanna be able to easily jump between these different onboarding documents, I can do that right from our link section. 
Um, and then lastly is our audit history. So every document is gonna have its own audit history. We can see who's viewed, who's made changes to documents within the system. Um, and then on the back end, of course, you know, a deeper level of auditing where we can look up by user or by document type and, and do those uh, reviews as well. Um, certainly a lot of features to dive into. Uh, if you wanna do a, a more full feature demo, um, you know, we can do that. Uh, we're happy to accommodate you there. Uh, but I don't want to take up too much time here on the webinar, so I'm going to pause there. If there's any questions, happy to help or answer those. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to pass it back to uh, Dustin and Kathy to uh, close this out. All right, so uh, excuse me, uh, definitely keep those questions coming. Um, I'm going to share screen really quick um, and um, Get to the last couple of slides we have for you. Fold up. And move this stuff out of my way. And loading. There we go. Um, wait, let me just drive us ahead here. I was going to pull up on the slide that I was on, but of course it didn't. Um, but we can see all these awesome slides again. Look at that. Beautiful. But we're going to start things off uh, with Kathy going over uh, Colorado Christian University uh, success story. Uh, so go ahead, Kathy, take it away. Yeah, thanks. And so these are really great opportunities for us to show how we're working with one another. And you can see here from a soft dot, you know, from Yep. You know, you'll hear a consistent theme of once it's starting and the continued use of it over and over, and that is consistent with um, Pathify as well. Um, but really, what we like to take a look at is the, you know, the efficiencies gained. So, you know, having a process where you're reducing the time to complete it by 60 percent. And then utilizing integrations that, you know, allow you to not have to manually enter and risk the data being put into your system, gaining that accuracy and speed um, and allowing people to get back to different functions of what they're doing, which you'll see over and over. And from in carrying that on, what they are utilizing is a lot of announcements from Pathify. And while everyone is on the same campus, you know, they are at different schools. So the use of announcements frequently, frequently is really helping. And a unique thing here for all of our Blackboard clients, um, migrated from Blackboard to Brightspace or any type of migration um, that you may have, and that's just their particular example, it, it, it did not impact their use of Pathify at all. So everything that they were doing with that solution there, there was no impact to this. So if there's other things you have going on, it's not a recreation of, um, you know, having to impact this system because you're doing a migration of another. They're very active within the communities as well. And um, they, are, they do have a good amount of pages um, currently used as file repository. And this is their fourth year utilizing Pathify. So hopefully that speaks to the volumes of that solution and the amount of quick success that you can find to really show those efficiencies. I know oftentimes with IT, like in, in the school as a whole, when you make that investment is really showing, you know, those initial gains that you're allowed to have after, you know, investing in a new solution and Pathify in conjunction with Softox and, and combining the solution has really allowed them to pull those together um, to get that quick ROI, if you will, in, in a short amount of time. With that, I'll hand it over to you, Dustin. I appreciate you uh, sharing that because uh, I know, yeah, I mean, that that LMS transition is like a huge thing. We always like to sort of like shine a light on is like that seamless sort of back end hard work that has to go into managing something like that. But from the student's perspective, um, you know, it, it's very uh, minimal 
uh, sort of disruptions and everything. So, um, so Salvi Regina uh, really kind of is a sort of hallmark example of uh, kind of the work that we do to help uh, institutions. And uh, they've been a longtime customer for us and even sort of deepened their initial use case uh, that was just communities to a full uh, site license to get even more value out of uh, what they're using. So I think, uh, again, it's that sort of like dynamic personalization, getting people uh, connecting with each other um, and kind of contouring around uh, each constituent stakeholder, their role uh, and what they uh, need to see and want to see. Uh, and, you know, you know, we see them as sort of uh, a success story because of their sort of uh, high user adoption, a lot of engagement, you know, when they, when you build out a lot of content, you build out a lot of, uh, you know, different pages and, and uh, groups and different things that users and students can engage with, like, uh, you know, that encompasses things from inside and outside the classroom, like you're, you're bringing people in and you're, you're keeping them there, uh, which I think is that a difference of sort of, uh, what most people historically would be familiar with of a portal that is literally kind of just a door. Um, this is a place where people will come, will stay, will get what they need, be connected with each other, you know, their peers and faculty and staff and uh, be able to kind of just uh, do the business of being a student, you know, which is, I think it's just the uh, sort of the connective tissue to something uh, life's soft docs of, sort of being able to bring uh, a, a platform that kind of specializes in those workflows and the forms and uh, creating a lot of efficiencies there as well. Kathy, I don't know if you anything that you wanted to add. No, I, I think that's great. You know, um, again, it's just the opportunity, I think, between both solutions just to connecting the systems and, and the people um, so that you're having that stronger engagement. Um, and, you know, more importantly, as students and, you know, matriculating in, if you will, the out, just the ability to communicate directly with them and, and have them be informed as possible um, based on the way that they're communicating with you. Yeah, and I'm kind of like keeping an eye on the clock, uh, moving kind of quickly through these last couple of slides and everything, make sure we have uh, uh, time for questions. So I appreciate folks have been uh, jumping in, doing the Q&As uh, so we can get uh, everything answered here. Uh, so another question from Joshua. Looks like Phil, yeah, you got this one. Um, yeah, sure, we can answer it live. So Joshua asked in the Q&A um, that Salesforce and Genzabar were on the diagram of uh, integration partners with SoftDocs. Um, and then ask, can both send and receive information from SoftDocs? Um, so yeah, we do have uh, API connections as well as uh, you know file import export capabilities with both of those systems, um, even database, uh, direct database connections, just depending on uh, your setup there. But yeah, we're happy to uh, read and write data between both of those as well as really any system. So we're, we're agnostic as far as integration partners go. If, if there's a API or a database connection that's capable, you know, we're happy to, uh, to read and write data. So yeah, thanks for that question, Josh. Yeah, and I know that's a big thing of like kind of that uh, system agnostic sort of integrations and everything like, you know, if you saw that slide before, uh, for us, there's just a bunch of logos up there. It was a bunch of platforms that we uh, collaborate with as well for any number of things as sort of that, again, that nexus point, it can be anything from an LMS, from an SIS, or uh, if you have something that helps manage events, uh, uh, like a you know calendar feed and those sort of things, uh, you know, we see a lot of different sort of integrations come in and uh, bringing in you know more different tools to kind of serve it up centrally in that uh, engagement hub uh, only sort of gets, you know, the more value out of it for, uh, for the students and everything. So I know that's a, it's a important, uh, thing of thinking, okay, these are, you know, all these great tools that we've, you know, uh, brought on, especially over the past couple of years, how can we leverage the ones that are sort of the ones that really work for us and make them, uh, work better and kind of smarter together, um, towards that end goal of, you know, student success and efficiency and, uh, all those sort of things. Any other questions, final thoughts? Um, Cause I know I have one that was sort of a curiosity for me of sort of like just the two of us sort of playing together of like, I think sort of the starting somewhere, even sort of like the, the kind of maybe foundational level of uh, bringing in a form into a Pathify page. Cause I think a, a usual sort of quick sort of uh, way to get that done would be to like iframe in 
something. So I think if, I imagine you've seen that a lot on like on uh, institutions websites or something. So just mm-hmm. kind of making that very clear of just like that is a like kind of just level one start somewhere, getting it going, having that. So it's not again, that sort of like, okay, well, the link's here. It's a PDF you have to download and then fill it out and then email it to somebody who then has to like do something else. It's like, you just fill it right there. You're still just in the engagement hub. You fill it, submit, you go on with your day. So any, I guess any sort of anecdotes or reflections on that sort of, uh, sort of integration. Yep. Nope. Yep. Common use case for us. So we can embed them within an iframe, of course, um, right on a, a school website or within that engagement hub as well. So yeah, keeping everyone within that system, just making it easier to, to get those forms completed. Yeah. Cause I know that's sort of just a, a best practice is like, if you can mm-hmm. prevent somebody having to kind of like pop open multiple windows, multiple tab, and like it kind of, you get sort of, you know, five layers deep or something. It's just like, if they can right, just yep. take an action from like where they are, then like, let's, that's, try to make that happen. So that's, that's really cool to, uh, to hear that that's a very, very easy and common thing to do. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's see. Any other questions? So I can pull up, um, I know we still did have kind of one final slide here. Um, email for uh, everybody here. Uh, if you do want to reach out to kind of keep the conversation going, uh, certainly, you know, following uh, on social media and stuff, uh, you know, makes uh, me happy, uh, warms my heart uh, as somebody who manages those sort of platforms and such. But um, cause, you know, all of us, you know, we're sharing a lot of resources all the time for folks uh, to check out uh, to kind of uh, see more kind of use cases or uh, things like that. But um yeah, I know that this just is a, a pretty cool sort of uh, collaboration to kind of see uh, what you know each of us are doing and um, the potential uh, for uh, striving towards uh, greater student success and efficiency and all that uh, all that good stuff. So, I guess if there is nothing else, then we can give folks a few minutes back in their day. Um, and uh, you know we'll be uh, following up with the uh, folks who registered and attended uh, with more information. Um, but thank you all for taking some time out of your day to hang out and uh, learn all about what we we're talking about here for leveraging technology for student success. Let's have a good rest of your day, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Connected Campus. Please leave a five-star review for the show and share it so others can discover us. Make sure to also subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Connected Campus.